Welcome to Savannah, Georgia. For the next 24 hours, we're gonna be exploring this charming city and taking you along with us. So whether you're here for a day or for a week, we have 14 exciting ideas for you to add to your next list. So whether or not Savannah's been at the top of your list before, maybe by the end of this video, you'll have an idea of if it's worth it. Okay, come on. Okay, welcome to Bonaventure Cemetery. This is actually our last stop of our trip, but we're putting it here at the start of the video because we recommend you putting this either at the start of your trip or at the end of your trip because it's a little bit out of the way of the rest of the things that we're gonna show you in this video that's central to Savannah. Now, I wouldn't normally be inclined to visit a cemetery when I'm on vacation, but a lot of Savannah's history comes alive here. Plus, it's just a really beautiful place to take a stroll under these moss-draped oaks. When I did this last week with my friends, we walked this, but you can also drive the whole thing. It's about 70 acres, so it's pretty enormous. They also have golf carts you can rent and do guided tours. We ran into one golf cart guy on our tour, and he gave us an explanation of one of the grave sites, and I was like, oh wow, yeah, that was just way more than I learned on like my iPhone guided tour. So. That might be a better way to go. It's definitely pretty hot in the summer to walk the whole thing, so I recommend doing a combination of walking and driving. The cemetery is open every day of the week from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and admission is totally free. Good morning. We just made it into Savannah, Georgia, and first things first, coffee. We are going to a place called Collins Quarter, which is a fantastic spot for brunch or for coffee. But since we already ate, we're just going to get coffee today. And then we're going to walk and Chandler has an itinerary of a few things for us to hit up. This is the moment I started regretting that we didn't get brunch here because truly everyone's meals here look amazing. Yeah, can we do that ice? Yeah. I, yes, thank yeah. you so much. First sip test. Cheers. Oh, that's delicious. That is phenomenal. You're gonna love that one. Mmm. Mm, that's good. All right, we're gonna take our coffees and go for a little stroll, see some of the historic parts of town, some of the iconic parks. Let's go. All right, our first stop, which was literally only two blocks down from the coffee shop, is Chippewa Park, which is where the famous scene in Forrest Gump was filmed. Unfortunately, the bench that he was sitting on is no longer here. It's at like some sort of historical museum down the road, but you definitely feel a little bit like you are, you know, in the movie scene. But also, Lucy has a confession. So when I was a kid, I had never seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Forrest Gump, and so I thought it was called Forrest Gump's Day Off, and I think that would be a great movie. Okay, so our next stop is Cathedral Basilica of St. John. It's an iconic church in town. I feel like any sort of Savannah, Georgia tour that you watch online, people hit the spot up. All right, so it is a functioning church. Happy about that. That means it's also still has services going on. So you saw the sign, worship is in progress. So we're not gonna interrupt. We're not gonna tour right now. Hopefully, maybe yeah. we'll catch it at a later point in the day. And that's exactly what we did. So the cathedral was originally founded in 1799 by French colonists fleeing from revolution in Haiti, but was rebuilt in 1876 after a devastating fire. And so you don't get stuck in a situation like we were in. Here are the visiting hours. I did make this whole walking tour, which you can actually download in the link in our description because I wanted it to make it the most efficient walking tour possible. Okay. So if you want to follow this journey, do this day trip yourself, you can easily download that link in the description. Look how beautiful that is. That's crazy. They don't make them like they used to. They really don't. <laughs> so pretty. Next stop, we are on Jones Street. And Jones Street is one of the most beautiful architectural streets in Savannah. All these historic homes, I'm not sure if they're called brownstones, but they remind me a lot of the Brooklyn brownstones. Let's fact check ourselves right here. Yeah, we're just gonna take a little loop, explore, and just admire the beauty of this street. I saw this funny meme on Instagram. It was commentary on couples traveling anywhere. And it was like, anytime you arrive in a new place, you start thinking, oh, could we live here? Yep, can no, we, live here? we drove in and Chandler was like, 
Could you see us living here? I, I was mean, like, just, maybe, just maybe. Totally. I mean, I, I was living in one of these. Oh my gosh, yeah. These homes that are is beautiful. Gorgeous. There are so many cute little shops all along this street, but a personal favorite is Asher and Rye. It's so cute. It's like home goods, clothing, and then it has a little cafe in there with pastries and coffee. It's so cute. Next up, Forsyth Park. So just a few blocks down from Jones Street is Forsyth Park. It's the largest park here in Savannah, Georgia. It's the big park that has the iconic fountain in it. Yes. So we're gonna walk around here a little bit before we grab a bite to eat. A few steps into this park, you can already tell that it's just so peaceful. Yeah, I would love to read a book here. And they actually have the same place that we got coffee. They have another location that's actually in the park, oh. which also would be probably a good spot for a little coffee pick me up if you're looking for one. I feel like something quintessential about this area that makes me feel like I'm in the south is, <laughs> is the Spanish moss. I just learned last week that that's what it's called, but it's all this little stringy stuff that literally looks like it was like placed there. But I found out it's just because all the seeds fly in the air and then they get caught specifically on certain types of trees and then they just grow down and it's very interesting to me. I feel like it gives it like its quintessential look. One funny thing about that fountain is that apparently it was just bought off of a random fountain catalog. More so in recent years they painted it white because it used to be all these like random colors. So there's no sort of like interesting architectural design about it. It's just kind of a random catalog fountain. So if you're like us and you visited in the summer, by this time you've worked up an appetite and quite a sweat. So an air conditioned place for lunch, what sounds better? This spot is called Wexford's. It's an Irish pub that actually just opened last week. I came here last week with my friends when we were in a torrential downpour and it was the only place nearby that was open that we could sneak into and it was phenomenal. We happened to be there on their opening day and it was so good we had to come back. And in true Lucy and Chandler fashion, we ordered the least Irish things on the menu. After you're done eating, it's perfect because your next stop is actually right next door, the Prohibition Museum. Now this tour only takes like 45 minutes to an hour to get through. You can do a self-guided tour or you can also do a group tour. We went for the self-guided because it was a little bit cheaper. I think in retrospect though, I wish I did a group tour. I think I would have learned a lot more. There was just so much information to read. And I think having someone to be able to point out the more relevant parts would have been helpful because it's mostly a museum of newspaper clippings and different stories along the way. But with the price of admission and the tour, you get a free cocktail at the end. I did this last week with my friends, so we're not gonna go in there today. Also, this area where we just ate is called City Market. It's also a spot that's supposed to have a lot of really good like nightlife, a lot of bars that line the streets. I know this is apparently a popular spot for like bachelorettes, bachelor parties, and so if you are interested in doing some bar hopping or that sort of thing, this is going to be your spot. Also, Savannah, Georgia has open container laws, which means that you can have exposed alcohol in a plastic cup as long as it's like ounces. 16 ounces. Oh, 16 ounces or which less. Which is enormous. <laughs> It's a lot. Nightlife is not as much our thing, but we do have a couple spots upcoming on this tour if you're like us and you want a little more laid back, casual cocktail. This place is called Bird's Famous Cookies. They are famous here. They're actually 100 years old this year, but they have free samples and they have, I think, over a dozen, maybe a couple dozen, mini tiny crispy cookie flavors. All my friends got them last week and just said they were phenomenal. So this is a must stop by when you go here. And the last fun fact about that place is they produce 500,000 cookies an hour, at least. If you're someone who likes to do a little bit of shopping, then check out Burton Street. There are a lot of great stores here, and specifically, we really loved this Paris Market store, so much so that we got Lucy a little extra birthday present for some upcoming travels we have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Burton Street is also where you're going to find Leopold's Ice Cream, which is a very well-known dessert shop if you can't tell from the line. So be sure to hit this spot up as well. Next stop is River Street. This is the only spot that I actually wish we carved out a little more time for. I heard that it was going to be pretty touristy, so I wasn't really looking forward to it. But although there were definitely some souvenir shops, 
This area was delightful. Also, if you're interested in doing a Sunset River cruise, which is pretty popular here, this is where you're gonna be picked up and dropped off for that. Admission is going to cost you around $50, and if we had more time, I would definitely check this out. By now, you're probably wondering where you should stay. We chose the Thompson Hotel, which we highly recommend. We truly loved every moment of our stay, the hospitality, the food, the view, and they have a rooftop pool, so it doesn't really get better than this. Okay, so we're staying at the Thompson Hotel. We already checked in and put our bags in here, but I wanna give you a quick room tour. Um, we're shoes off household, so thank you. When you first walk in, you have a little seating area to pull on your shoes. We have a beautiful closet in here, complete with umbrella, safe, everything you usually have. I love the bathroom. I think particularly this design on the shower is incredible. I just like love the black on it and I love some DS and Durga products. Nice big bathroom. We got some robes. We will absolutely be using these later. Gorgeous bed. Is this a king? I think this is a king. Yeah, it's probably a king. Look at the design of this. How gorgeous. I bet each of those little Snickers bars is a day's wage. We got a fridge, some drawers. We got a nice little seating area. Get to have some coffee and breakfast. I actually think we're about to make some coffees right now, but I love it. I love this place. I love just like kind of the, the vintage, but also dark and wood features of this room. I think it's stunning. I would say the only downside about this hotel is that it wasn't as central as some of the other hotels that I was looking at, but everything was only like a six to eight minute drive away. Also, I just want to show you my bag that I got because I'm so excited. I like it. Thank you. It has a lemon. Nice. We just got freshened up, showered, changed, because we've got two happy hour spots that we're going to in a really cool place we got for dinner as well. But we're actually staying at the hotel for the first option. This hotel actually has the highest rooftop bar in all of Savannah, Georgia. So I think we're gonna get some sweeping views of the city, grab some drinks, maybe a few apps before we hit up the next happy hour spot. Let's go. Bar Julian was the perfect spot to start off our evening. After having just walked all around town, it was actually pretty cool to see from like an aerial view all the places that we had just visited. Although we were mainly thinking of this spot as a bar, I would honestly say that their food was better than their drinks. The drinks were super creative, but they were on the sweeter side, which just isn't our preference. If you do come here, you need to try their fresh pita. I've had a lot of fresh pita bread living in New York, but this was truly some of the best that I have ever had. And seriously, I am not a exaggerating when I say that, it was so good. The next spot that we went to is called Late Air. This was Lucy's favorite spot that we went to, and although I don't like them all that much, she said that these oysters were some of the best that she's ever had. And she's from Seattle, so I feel like that's saying something. If you're into natural wines, this is definitely the spot for you. Just keep in mind that everything here was a little bit on the pricier side, but don't let that keep you from trying this place because the happy hour wines were very affordable. In hindsight, I wish we would have just eaten here for dinner because our last stop, although it was pretty good, was probably a better spot to grab lunch than dinner. I did ask to be seated in the empty section of the restaurant so that it would be a little quieter and easier to film. So don't let the emptiness fool you. <laughs> Most of this restaurant is very full. So we will keep this here as an honorable mention if you're in the mood for Thai food, but nothing to write home about. Okay, last but not least. Was coming to Savannah worth it? Give me your take, Lou. I feel like we've been to a lot of the major Southern cities and I would say this is one of my favorites, for sure. Absolutely. I did not expect Savannah to be no. so unique, cool, different too. It's just like, it yeah. has this entirely different vibe than any other city I've ever visited before. And I feel like the people here have a lot of like Savannah historical pride yeah. about like, what makes Savannah unique. So that's been fun. I feel like from the servers at a random Irish pub we go to, to like these people at these museums or things like that, they just like love it. They love it and it's awesome. And there's a lot to do here. So many historical sites, so many places to get good food. I feel like we really just scratched the surface yeah. from this one oh, day yeah. tour. I'd say like a three day visit would probably be amazing and you feel like you've gotten everything done. Yeah. But also a day trip I feel like was also super worth it and, and it gives me that feeling of wanting to come back, which also is just such a good sign.